Hello, I'm Dr. John McDougall. This is uh, March 18th, 2020. And things are changing by the hour. I'm a medical doctor, I'm a board certified internist. Uh, many of you listening have been my patients for years. Uh, you know me and you uh, know the effectiveness of my treatments. And uh, I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not a virologist. I think you should be getting your news as I am by listening to uh, various news outlets on television and reading the newspaper. I mean, these are the people who can give you updated figures on what's going on. And uh, certainly I don't know anything more in terms of uh, the world picture than you do. Uh, I have no special access to what's going on. I'm just uh, watching, confused, worried to say the least. And I'm gonna try and give you the most conservative advice I can because I don't wanna look back and say to you, gee, I wish I'd have told you that you ought to do this. Or you look back and say, well, Dr. John and Mary McDougall told you you really need to take this seriously, and you didn't. Well, uh, let me at least give you the opportunity like I have with other issues, particularly your health, which I've been talking to you about for over 46 years. Uh, let me give you the opportunity to hear what I believe, and I do believe these things strongly. And uh, whether you act or not, uh, that's entirely up to you, but I think you ought to uh, take advantage of what Mary and I are doing and what we've learned. Uh, I have uh, had, as I say, 46 years of clinical practice as a board certified internist. My focus is on nutrition. I would have to say that I probably know as much about human nutrition as uh, most of the experts in the world. And uh, I've had a very successful practice. But it's been hard to sell what I sell. And this, uh, I believe, also is going to be hard to sell, particularly now in the middle of March in the United States of America when things are really quiet. Uh, my uh, son and daughter-in-law are medical doctors up here in uh, Oregon, and uh, they have uh, been very, very quiet up till today, and nothing as far as I know has changed today. In fact, my daughter-in-law, she saw four patients yesterday, that's all. People are staying away from doctor's offices, and they should, no question about it. But I fear that next week's going to be completely different and the week after that is going to be chaos you never and ever expected. At least that's what I'm preparing for. And I'm not listening to a bunch of hopeful messages. I'm going to take steps that I think are necessary to protect us and the rest of our family. And I want to share those with you. And also, you know, as I told you in the last webinar I did, and I encourage you strongly to watch that, very technical, very scientific, lots of research, uh, that lecture that I provided for you, which is on my website, is going to be different than this one. That one was factual. Yeah, I got a few of the, I got a few of the words wrong, but you get the message on that one. And it was a very powerful message. It's been seen by 45,000 people in three days on YouTube. So I would encourage you to listen to it. I've gotten nothing but uh, great compliments on what I shared with you. Of course, you always have the trolls out there that are telling you a bunch of silly stuff. But uh, you know where they come from, what they're all about. So don't pay any attention to them. Anyway, uh, I think this is very serious. Uh, I, I have prepared my family uh, the best I can. Uh, we're in, a, in a kind of a special circumstance in the sense that we live in Oregon. And uh, my son is a professor at Oregon Health and Science University. He's a medical doctor. And uh, my daughter-in-law is a uh, frontline in the uh, urgent care type doctor, so she's gonna be seeing patients a lot. Now, we have two grandchildren. Some of you have asked, what are we gonna do about the grandchildren? Well, right now, right now, the sister-in-law is taking care of the grandkids, but that's not gonna last for long. And the kids are going to have to be transferred over to grandma and grandpa's house. Well, they're coming clean and they're staying. Very important, you know, we need to protect ourselves. And so the kids will change their clothes, they'll bathe carefully, they'll have not been sick, They'll come here, they're not gonna go back to their parents who may be ill or certainly in contact with uh, <clears throat> the world around them, uh, front line, and uh, they're gonna be staying with us 100%. And so we're gonna isolate our family very carefully. Uh, <clears throat> you, uh, you also need to know that uh, some of the messages that are coming out saying that uh, children are completely protected, you don't have to worry about your kids, and healthy young adults are just fine and it's only old people that have to worry, that's not true. I mean, 15% of the healthcare workers in China became seriously ill. People are dying in their 40s and 50s and 30s. So, uh, you know, it may not be as uh, likely for you to uh, suffer and die as a younger person, because younger people are generally healthier than older people. 
but don't feel immune. And likewise, uh, there are some young children who get sick too, very sick. So I, I don't think you should let your guard down at all. Now, um, uh, let's see. Well, let, let, let me just kind of talk to you about uh, some of the questions you had. Uh, are there any extra precautions a pregnant woman should take or uh, somebody with any special illnesses? Uh, not, not really. I think uh, your goal should be total isolation, which is what I'm going to teach you and what we're going to talk to you about. And it's hard. You know, Mary and I have not been in, involved in a, in a total sterile environment for a long time. Uh, I met Mary, as many of you know, in the operating room of Blodgett Hospital in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We were both surgical techs. She was a nurse and she'd worked for uh, several years and I worked for approximately four years putting myself through medical school in surgery as a surgical tech. In other words, I handed instruments to doctors and hold, hold retractors and, and I had to learn sterile technique. And so, you know, it's not unknown to me. It may be unfamiliar to me after so many years for me to put it in practice. And we do err. Yes, we do. And uh, we just keep trying harder and harder and harder to get our technique as clean as possible because we don't want to get sick. Uh, estimates are between 20 and as high as 100% of people are going to get infected. So uh, we certainly don't want to be part of that group. Uh, our ages are 73 and 74 years old. We're in relatively good health. I have to tell you, though, even though I've eaten well, I've been relatively trim, I've been active, I've gotten sun, all recommendations that I've given you over the past, I've gotten uh, what I thought was the flu and gotten very sick from the grandkids in the past. So I don't think you should depend upon your diet, even if you follow strictly the McDougal diet, as the sole answer to staying well. I think that's a very foolish move. However, I likewise think it's a very foolish move not to get yourself in the best health possible. Maybe just as foolish on that side. Uh, you need to be as healthy as possible. You need to get off immune suppressing drugs. And we're going to talk about that. But isolation is key. You've got to stay away from this virus. I don't care how uh, invincible you think you are. I don't care how healthy you are. Uh, your, your, your key to staying well is to avoid the uh, COVID virus uh, 19 and to not get the infection that's going around. Uh, you, you, you know, that's your best way to win. The question is, is what happens when the, the so-called flattening of the curve occurs? Well, that doesn't mean the cases are going to go away. I mean, will our society ever return to normal? I don't know. Uh, certainly, uh, we're not making plans in that direction. I think anybody who thinks that they're going to go back to the way things were, you're making a, you're wasting time. Uh, it's not going to happen, I, know, I believe. You've got to move forward. And of course, we're thinking of many ways to deal with uh, our business, which is helping you to maintain excellent health. And we've been doing that for, oh man, 1986, I started the live-in programs at St. Lita Hospital. We've been doing them since 2002 at our resort, at the Flamingo Resort. But because of obvious circumstances that are going on right now, we've had to cancel the last program. We plan on running another one in June and another one in August, and maybe some other extra programs uh, if travel allows and such. Uh, likewise, we're uh, trying to turn uh, a segment of our business into telemedicine, which uh, I think will be helpful in terms of uh, both our, uh, our staff and uh, our delivery of messages. This is nothing new. I've been thinking about doing telemedicine for a long time. And the rules are changing about telemedicine so that we may able, be able to deliver medical care out of state and hopefully out of country and do it legally. And uh, offer you the kind of medical care that you would have gotten at the clinic, but you'd be able to stay at home. We'll bring in our team for education. Anyway, we have a long way to go before we have all this settled. Right now, you need to take care of yourself and everything you need to know is on the website, free. And you know that. Uh, we've been dealing with that for a long time. Why do we give it away for free? Well, that just happens to be the way Mary and I work. Uh, we've always felt it our obligation to help people and so the website and pretty much everything that we do, except for obvious things like vacations and 10-day programs and so on, we've offered the public since, uh, well, since we started, certainly before 2002, all the free information, all the recipes, all the discussions of disease and so on, they're all on the website, drmcdougal.com. I would take advantage of it. And you're not going to find any gimmicks there, to say, be quite honest with you. Uh, so d diet's important. I've addressed that in great detail with you in the last lecture, how a good diet 
improves your gut barrier, how it improves your lung function barriers. You know, we have evidence that people who smoke the same amount of cigarettes, who eat an unhealthy diet, have a much, much higher risk of lung cancer. I assume this transfers into having healthy lungs and avoiding other serious injuries to the body, such as viruses, uh, such as uh, cigarette smoke or whatever. Uh, you need to make your primary, one of your primary defense lines, your natural protective uh, parts of your body. Now, it's really important because I believe, I believe that this is not the first nor the last threat that you're going to have. I've discussed SARS with you, H1N1, the Spanish flu epidemic, et cetera, in my past webinar. And with overcrowding, overpopulation, with uh, the uh, current farm practices of raising billions of animals in tight, tight, tight uh, uh, farmyards, uh, passing viruses around with the warming of the climate, uh, this is going to be a thing of the uh, normal everyday life of the future, I believe. So uh, prepare yourself. Uh, that's my message to you and decide that you're going to, you're going to enter a brave new world and it's going to be a successful world. I really do believe that also. I've been quite discouraged about what's been going on, particularly in terms of climate change over the past five years. And, you know, just like with my medical practice, you know, I discovered the cure of 80% of the illnesses. Really? 80% of chronic illnesses, certainly preventing 80% of chronic illnesses back about 50 years ago. And too few people have listened. And the whole climate change thing, you know, people are not suffering, not directly, not many of you. You know, we lost our home in the October 2017 wildfires in California. So I can say we have experienced directly the uh, calamities associated with climate change, but most of you out there really haven't. And just like right now, on March 18, 2020, you're sitting around wondering what the heck's going on. You know, I'm not being affected. Everything's fine. Well, this is, this is, uh, some of you are thinking this is a hoax. I'm going to tell you, wait a week or two. You know, wait till your home, home burns down. Wait till you, uh, you have a hurricane or a flood. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there are, there are some positive things happening in terms of, uh, people's vision of, uh, our brave new world, like they're reporting for the first time that they can see blue sky in China. Hey, and in Venice, they found there were fish in the canals. They couldn't see them. So they cleaned up the canals uh, due to the lockdown that's occurred. So maybe people are going to get a glimpse of the control we have potentially of saving ourselves from something I consider a more serious threat. And that's what's going to happen in the very near future in terms of climate change. But regardless, uh, at least the COVID-19 virus infections have uh, focused my attention on something different. And, uh, and let me uh, share what I can with you in terms of, of um, how to respond to this. Let's see. Well, let's, get, let's just get right into uh, some of the food questions we've had here. Mary, Mary was, uh, oh, you were excited about joining me this morning, weren't you? No, I was just going to help you with food questions. Are you just going to help? <laughs> well, come on over here so people can say hello to you. Okay, Mary is uh, hello, Mary, Mary. 74. I'm 73, almost 73. We're both almost of those ages. And we've enjoyed excellent health uh, most of our lives. We've had a pretty tough time here in the last couple of years. But besides that, you know, we've been, you know, pretty much lived a, uh, you know, a very comfortable life. We've been very fortunate. But anyway, uh, we'd like to also have a, a good future, not only for ourselves, but for the kids and for all of you, too. So let's just uh, start by talking about some of the things that we've been doing. And you're welcome to send in questions. Uh, certainly, I hope you don't hold me to... Uh, any of the things that are going on, but um, as I say, your main uh, your main source of information would be the uh, the media. I think they can be relatively trusted, and uh, all you I would encourage you to do is err on the side of pessimism, not optimism. All right. Well, let's see, Mary. Well, are you going to um, talk about any of these um, questions? I think here? I've got most of them. Okay. Yeah. So you sent in some questions, and, I, and I've uh, answered most of them for you, I think. Uh, all right, well, let's go right on to that. All right, let's start, let's, start, well, let's deal with the isolation problems first. Okay. All right, we, we, uh, first of all, we live in a unit that has its own uh, internal environment. In other words, our air is not circulated to other units, and we feel very fortunate about that. And uh, as a result, we breathe our own air. And it's clean. Uh, Mary and I are very healthy. Uh, we've not suffered any 
any exposure, any, any significant uh, uh, signs or symptoms of being ill. And we want to keep it that way. So we're doing everything, out, uh, everything that we can to keep ourselves away from this particular contagion. So <clears throat> uh, we're kind of in lockdown here. We've stopped our, uh, uh, our personal trainer, anything delivering to our house. If we have anything delivered to the house, it'll be delivered outside the door and transactions will be done that way. Uh, how long the virus lives on fomites, which are inanimate, inanimate objects, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I think sunlight is the great cleaner. If you have an opportunity to put your packages, envelopes, et cetera, in the sunlight for a while first before you handle them, that's a good idea. You can also wash them down with alcohol, et cetera, uh, which uh, speaks to, well, well, we'll talk about going out a little bit later. Let's talk about keeping our place clean. Uh, we, Someone asked if it was okay to open windows to well, let fresh air in. I think so. I don't see any problem with that at all. Likewise, I don't see any problem with you going out for a walk, uh, particularly in the sunshine. Uh, we're going to go out this afternoon. We'll be sitting on the wooden benches uh, that are outside of where we live. And uh, they'll have been sunned for at least 10, 15 minutes before. Even if somebody coughed on the, on the bench, the sunlight ought to have killed all the coronaviruses. But when we go places, we, we are pretty careful. We take alcohol wipes along with us. Like when we traveled about 10 days ago to the weekend, um, I explained to you in the last interview that we wiped down our airplane seats uh, with alcohol wipes. And we wore gloves. And the next time we fly or go out in any place, we'll be wearing masks. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. But anyway, we, we are, are keeping our place clean. We have a pair of shoes that we wear in and out of the house. And we try and remember to take them off when we come in the house. Uh, anybody who decides to come into our house, and you know we've limited that to absolute necessities, but say the uh, plumbing broke or the refrigeration, we had to have somebody come in the house. Well, now you're dealing with the potential of, remember, there's a large segment of the population is gonna be sick here pretty soon. Now you're dealing with having to have somebody come into your house and expose you to the virus. Well, we have booties. And Mary, would you show them the booties? I will. Okay. It, they come in packages. Um, I bought them through on Amazon, and um, you just open them up, and uh, they fit all size feet, and they have a little elastic band, yes. and you put this over your shoe, so the shoe can fit nicely in there, and then um, the person that's in your house can wear the booty and then uh, take it off after they leave your house. And make sure you don't touch the booty. Yeah, don't touch the booty. Have them touch the booty yeah. and throw it in the trash after they leave your house. Of course, you know, this is a good time to wash your hands too. And you may decide you wanna have people put on gloves when they come to your house to work or a mask. I, you know, I wouldn't fault you in any way for doing that. Uh, I, I think you need to be very careful. Uh, we also always wear gloves when we go out of the house. And when we come back in, we. We uh, take the gloves off, throw them away, and we'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, we wash our hands. Uh, I think I misspoke and told you for 20 minutes last time, but we wash them <laughs> for at least- You've been washing your hands all day long. We wash them for, uh, you know- 20 seconds. Uh, that's what they say, 20 seconds. But again, the solution to pollution is dilution. So you need to lose a lot of water, some soap to kind of break up the, uh, the garbage on your hands. And, and the you soap doesn't sure kill anything. And you go through like this and get all the insides yeah. and on your nails and things like that. Do you remember that. we used to have some special nail brushes? We had special nail brushes yeah. in, in the, uh, operating room. on the operating room to, to be, be sure to get what was underneath our nails. We should probably, uh, I have one in the shower. I can put <laughs> it out by the sink. Well, you know, this was 50 years ago. Maybe some surgical sterile techniques have changed. I doubt it. But we used to wear booties. Yeah. And uh, we used to wear gloves, I think. Maybe. We wore hats, too. We, we wore yeah. hats to cover um, our hair. And gowns. Gowns. And uh, so we're well trained in sterile technique. But that was to be sterile. That was. Well, I would like these people to be sterile. Well, you're not going to walk around your house with a gown. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> but when they go out, I, I think that you ought to consider. Nobody's going to wear a gown when they go out. Not at the moment. No, not not gonna gonna do, <laughs> they're going to feel next week. Oh. Uh, but anyway, you do want to make sure that you wash your hands and, uh, so, and soap and water and lot, lots and lots of water and uh, maybe some alcohol sponges afterwards, but on your level of contamination, you're concerned. But gloves are very important. Mary, let's, let's just show them a little bit about gloves. Okay. And uh, I tried to demonstrate to you last time 
about how to and how not to handle your gloves or so any other options. So these are the kind like of the gloves that I bought. Again, I think I got them on Amazon, probably. probably. And um, they're not sterile, so they're just to keep your hands clean. And you want to put them on. So you can see me do this. Okay. Put them on like this. Then you take the other and, one. And we really do wear these. We wear them when we go to the grocery store. And actually, people have come up to me and said to me in the grocery store, are you with that other man who's wearing blue gloves in the store? <laughs> That's <laughs> me. Said, that was him. And I said, yes. Yeah. Well, and you know, so this... we use these when we go grocery shopping. Yeah, or any place, on or the airplane, any place. Any yeah, place. On the airplane. Uh, now, not only does it protect you from getting the virus, but also uh, it reminds us not to touch our face. You don't realize it until you think about it, how many times you touch your face. This is why I have my hair tied back. Because my hair was hanging down over my ears, I'd be tempted to push it back with my hands. But if I see my blue gloves, then I remember not to touch my face. So, you know, we'll become the blue glove <laughs> crowd. <laughs> the McDougal followers, all blue gloves. Right. Well, that's fine, Mary, you got them on. But we gotta, you got to be very careful about taking your footwear, your clothes that you might think are contaminated, your gloves off that you don't take your clean hand and touch the dirty surfaces. So uh, again, you know, we have to remind ourselves of this. We know how to do it, <laughs> but it's just a matter of reminding. Sometimes you get a little yeah. bit complacent. And, and we're trying to get back into our good this. habits. Yeah. So work at it. Don't feel guilty if you don't succeed every time. Okay, so, so let me see if I can do it right. Because Some, sometimes- Yeah, you don't want to okay. touch the outside of the so glove. I'm gonna take a hold off. of the glove here and take most of it off. Now I'm gonna leave a couple of fingers here so that I can take these fingers and take this glove off by pulling it completely off like this. See, now it's inside out, so it's, it's got a clean surface. Now it's inside out, so I have a clean surface that I can take the rest of this glove off with and yeah. throw them in the trash. That's where they go, so you have to be very careful about contacts with, uh, you know, with things that have been contaminated. And you don't use them again. You don't have, yeah. unless- <laughs> you, throw, of, you throw them away. Uh, but anyway, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how important we think it is for us to not be confronted with this virus and challenge ourselves. I don't care what age we would be. Uh, so we're making all the effort necessary. We are going to go to the grocery store uh, up here in Oregon, they have uh, special hours for elderly or immunocompromised people early in the morning. We might take advantage of that. And certain days, too. Certain days, certain yeah. Days. But I'll guarantee you, we're going to be the funniest looking people in the grocery store. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm out, and I'll out there to win a, a popularity or beauty contest. And I'm going to have gloves on at least and probably a mask at least. And when I come home, I'm taking my shoes off at the front door. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you might even consider getting a, 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 a mat for your front door to uh, that holds sterilizing solutions so that you or other people walk into your home. Well, if you have a lot of people coming into your home, yeah. that would probably be a good idea. We have not done that, but yeah. we've, oh, thought, we've, about we've, we've thought about we've it. We've thought about it. So you might consider that also. And uh, But we don't have too many people that come no, well, we've, into our house. We've basically gone into isolation. I've, I've stopped so, my um, cleaning service. Yeah. And we have stopped our um, our physical therapist from coming over for the next few weeks until we see right. how things go. And um, so it's just basically John and I. Right. And we're not seeing our, you know, our, obviously our children who work in the front lines. And uh, when we do see our grandchildren, I told you, they're, they're going to be here, period. They're not going to be transferred <laughs> back and forth. Uh, you, I, I would strongly encourage you to think about any possible way that you can keep yourself from catching the virus and uh, for a whole lot of reasons. And to pay really good attention to uh, the advice I gave you in the last lecture in terms of eating well, getting off immunosuppressive drugs. We talked about drugs used for various autoimmune diseases, drugs used for cancer, even uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, Advil. 
have, uh, people have recommended against taking those kind of medications. I've recommended against taking those for a long time anyway, because your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they interfere with your ability of your bones to heal. And uh, well, they have lots of side effects, uh, serious uh, <laughs> stomach problems and, uh, Anyway, so that all was not, medications have side effects, basically. They do, they do. But I think acetaminophen may be the best uh, if you feel you need something for discomfort. But remember, the body defends itself with fever. And if you make the fever go away, you brought down some of the ability of the body to heal itself. So be careful of any medication that reduces your temperature. And I would stay away from you know, as many drugs as you can. And look up the drugs you're on see which uh, may suppress your immune system. And as you well know, we have published data that shows that we're able to reduce or stop near, nearly 90% of the medications that people attend our clinic. And some of these medications are immunosuppressive. And uh, in this day and age where you're really concerned about immunosuppression, I'd be even more aggressive about taking patients off uh, chemotherapy, which is a questionable value. I've told you that in the last lecture. Well, there are some important exceptions. Uh, and likewise, with your uh, autoimmune diseases, uh, we, you know, we're able to cure those with diet. So why bother getting drugged? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't listen to me before. Why would you listen to me now? Okay, uh, many of you did. Many of you did. I, excuse me, but I expected a bigger... A lot of people, I, I expect, oh, a lot of people did. I expected a bigger following. I told them that you could cure these <laughs> things. No, they were, had they no were cost. supposed to be lying out the, around the door, right? You know, all the way to the airport. <laughs> You've never shown up, folks. But maybe this will, will call you and some of your friends to attention if you already haven't come to the, the kind of attention that I think is deserved. All right, let's see. Where should we go next? About, um, well... How about, how about water? Water. Oh, someone asked about the water. Uh, why are why are why are we be we be why are we being told to get water? What's wrong with tap water? I think tap water. Can, can you show the water bottle uh -huh. and the and the hose I brought out? Yeah. Okay. Look, this is what we have ordered. We have uh, oh, I know six or eight of these. Okay, this is an empty one, of course. But we have a dispenser. Yeah, we have a, a water dispenser and. Uh, this, of course, is as clean of water as you can get. Uh, this bottle I'm going to keep because I'm going to fill it up very shortly when I can't get any more of these clean bottles of water by using this. We don't have uh, a regular hose nozzle on our place, and so we can't screw in a regular garden hose. So we have one of these, which fits on the tap. And I'm going to keep my bottle, my water bottles full if I can't get them from the, oh, the water cellar that we right now get. And I encourage you to keep, keep water around the house. You're, you're going to need it. I told you a quart of water a day for your thirst only. That's just for your thirst. And that's minimum. And you need clean, fresh water. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, we also, we had a little advantage in the sense that I was well aware that we were facing some serious problems. I, I, I really did not have a full concept of what it was, but I knew it was serious. And, we put ourselves in total isolation from our friends over a month ago, and they didn't understand that. And uh, we also stocked up. And I hear the stores are <laughs> kind of empty, but I, I think you can still well, get. We, yeah, we haven't been since yeah. we've since since uh, we heard that the shelves were empty. Yeah, well, we oh, hear we hear lots of them. stories about the shelves being. And of course, there's Amazon, which you get a lot of food from. There are a couple of things to think about. Our food. Uh, it may not be that popular because we eat starches like beans, rice, corn, potatoes, fruits and vegetables. And uh, that's not the sad American diet and people are tough to change. Uh, so it's easy for us, I, easier for us, I think, to get the commodities that we not only enjoy, but we know make us healthiest. And uh, well, maybe there'll only be rice and beans left on the shelves. <laughs> or whatever, whatever. But we've taken the trouble. We've brought, brought in about 100 pounds of food, dried food. And you need about 1,600 calories a day. And what I gave you is some figures that about a pound of cooked starch is 1,600 calories, which you might want to look it up on the internet and see what you're doing. Uh, yes. So okay. the other thing is, is when the refrigeration goes out, you and I, they still get to eat. <laughs> their dead animals are going to rot. So, and <laughs> <laughs> so we're way ahead of the situation. Uh, I would uh, encourage you, remember this is a starch-based diet. You ought to be consuming 80 to 90% of your diet as starch. 
And then you got to get some fruits and vegetables in terms of vitamin A and C if you eat starches that come from above the ground, like legumes and grains. If you eat starches that come from below, below the ground, like uh, sweet potatoes and potatoes, they have all vitamin C and A that you possibly could ever use. So you have to add nothing. Uh, the whole B12 issue is something you can probably set aside for two or three years, but we do recommend B12. Uh, people ask about supplements. I discussed supplements in the last lecture. Uh, I think in general, they're not a good idea. Uh, natural medicines, which are different, you probably a little expense, little side effects, and uh, I'm not an expert on that either. But I do think you should stay away from supplements. Some people ask specifically about C, vitamin C. I told you I had did an interview with Lance Pauling one time on one of my radio shows. And of course, he was a big believer, but not 10 grams of vitamin C to prevent cancer or colds. He died of prostate cancer, as I remember. Anyway, uh, I don't think you're making a big error in terms of taking natural medicines, not supplements like vitamin A and beta carotene and vitamin D. Go out in the sun. All right, so some of the foods that we have uh, bought that you might think about buying, and some of this is, uh, is uh, from Amazon and some of it is over the store. So let's start with the starches, Mary Ann. Oh, the starches, yeah. okay. I think, because that, really well, that's what you may need, Maine. Let me show, uh, I have a big one that I'll show them later. Okay. But this is, this is where we bought a lot of our products from a place called Harmony House. These are, sliced potatoes and if you look at them closely they look like potato chips but they're really just dried dehydrated sliced potatoes and you put a cup of these into four cups of water and you end up with four cups of um sliced wet wet edible edible potatoes oh, vitamin c loaded potatoes they're the anti-scurvy vitamins. And so we have them like this. You, you, can, you can live on potatoes and water. Alone. We also have them. Well, that's a heavy one. No, that's not. It's potatoes. Oh, that's the light one. We also have them like this. Yeah. So we have uh, stored potatoes. And, uh, you know, even if there wasn't any heat available, we could just soak them in water and we'd have something to eat. I know, sounds drastic. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we're trying to get ourselves and you prepared for the worst possible I can possible have outcome. potatoes like this. Yeah. These are hash brown potatoes, but they're dry. So you just fill them with water again and you let them set and then you cook them just like regular hash brown potatoes. Yeah. Because lots of people do not have enough freezer room to keep all these vegetables and things like this in their freezer. Right. And, um, Fresh potatoes aren't going to last forever. So it's nice to have the dried ones. And you also mentioned vegetables. Look at this. It's called a vegetable sampler. And inside are all different kinds of vegetables. Okay, dry. This is, yeah, yeah, they're dried. This yeah. is corn and peas and leeks and carrots and again you just rehydrate them in water and then they end up like diced carrots or diced celery yes. and you need them for vitamin a and c but you only need a little bit you know i would i would guess a tablespoon <laughs> that's I it in a meal or a day dried mushrooms mm -hmm. and dried bananas you know they'd have lots of a and c in them and you can eat a couple of those a day you don't have to eat a lot just need a little bit of vitamin A and C if you're eating uh, above ground storage organs like uh, grains and legumes. Underground storage organs, as we talked about, have all the A and C you'd need. And again, you may be in a minimal situation. Right now, we're only to the point where you can get takeout food uh, or you can get delivered food, but uh, I'm planning for a whole lot of possibilities. And I have something here called vegetable soup. And the reason I have a big one up here is because I want to show you, because uh, you're going to ask, Harmony House is where I got it. And I ordered it online. I just went to HarmonyHouse.com. And they have a wide variety of all kinds of dried things. And if we can store that much food in our small oh. apartment, it's really easy to do. Um, I 
I can so this, show you this food will last for years. Beans. I have big pots of beans yeah. just like that. Uh, uh, potato one. I can't even lift I'll, it. I'll lift it. For it's you. too heavy. And um, I have other beans in sacks like this. Oh, great. Pretty, pretty heavy. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. Okay. So here you go. I sacrificed my, get my exercise without my personal trainer here. <laughs> anyway, this How is many, a, uh, this 24 is, pounds of pinto beans. All right, 24 pounds. It, it, cooked, you're probably looking at, you know, 50 <laughs> days of beans. Yeah. So, you know, you might. And if you haven't oh, found these, these yet, these you can also buy on Amazon. And they're called Santa Fe refried beans and they're fat free vegetarian they have no oil in them no salt in them they're just plain old beans cook and they come past. yeah you just mix them with water and it, they cook in five minutes and so you can buy them in this size or you can buy them in a the large bag size i don't know what we, uh, if i have a large bag size me, uh, hit this for you what oh this is dinner for tonight. Okay, bring it over. I'll bring it over. Okay. So I put these beans on last night so that I could show you this morning. Yeah. Um, and this is what this is tonight's dinner. I mean, this is our well, usual dinner. That's right? part of tonight's dinner. Yeah. But the pot, we can't. Let me get the spoon. All right. So, you know, this may not look very appetizing when it's in a bag, but we have a cooked pot of beans here and we'll probably. Uh, All right, so this is what the beans look like. Yeah, we'll have. Uh, I have. There's. There must be eight cups of cooked beans in here, and what I'll do with this is I will add um, some a can of tomatoes to it, um, maybe some spinach, and what I discovered at the. Harmony Farmer's Place is that spinach, if I can't get it fresh, look at this. So you, you'd have the beans and you know, if you could have this some This is paper. dried spinach. So I could just throw a handful. Yeah. I mean, instead of having frozen, it, it, it's easier to keep. I can just throw a handful of spinach um, into my beans along with the tomatoes, and then my favorite seasoning, uh, so you don't have to keep a whole lot on hand, is this um, Kirkland, which is a Costco brand, but you can buy it on Amazon. Um, organic, no salt seasoning mixture. Notice the nice large jar I have. And um, I usually buy them three at a time, and they make everything taste great. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're not going to suffer. I mean, particularly if you've already learned the McDougal diet, uh, there'll be very little change at all. And even I in times of hard dried sweet potatoes. So, okay. What? Here we have rice. We have four bags of rice. Have rice. I also have a 25 pound bag that I oh. ordered, but this, you know, I have probably eight bags this size and I have a 25 pound bag size so we're not going to run out of rice and you can you can also buy beans in cans a lot more expensive that way but you know at least they're they're, they're already cooked and they're gonna last and they're gonna last and then I just buy several cans of tomatoes um, that are diced up already and I add those to my beans and uh, pretty easy meal yeah. Served over rice or served plain. Um, anything, anything else that you think that they should have done? Dried starch is what you want. Yeah, well, I have. Um, we have one more box of, of various things in the other. We have about 100 pounds of food. 100 pounds of food, I think, and is going to last us two or three months. Oats. Yeah, rolled, rolled oats. Rolled oats. I got a lot of bags of these. And I have um, shelf stable rice milk, or this is oat milk. I also have some soy milk somewhere back there. So I don't have to go to the store and get milk. 
And, um, but we do plan on going to the grocery store, uh, well prepared, well suited, well armored. Yeah. But we do, we need to we get do. out of the house yeah. once in a while, you know. Everybody does. Well, that's why it's nice we can just go out and walk. And I think people should go out and walk. Just keep your distance. And um, yeah, you're you're no risk when you're outside as long as you don't have somebody sick in your close proximity. Yeah. And uh, you know, like we'll go when we finish this time together. We'll go down and spend an hour or two in the sun. Sunshine is crucial for your immunity and good health. Not too much, but just enough. And also a little walking around is important and your food is important. I've laid that all, all out for you in the last lecture. So let's see, were there any other topics that we wanted to cover? Uh, I hope you get the, uh, the serious tone of my discussion here. You may think that I'm overreacting. That's fine, I don't care. You know, it's just like with the uh, my tributed disease for the last half a century. And I, I never really cared if you came back and said, I couldn't do it. And so I didn't get the results. But I did care if you came back and said, I did it. I did what you said, Dr. McDougal. It didn't work. You know, I haven't heard that. No. So uh, I'm going to teach you well, the best I know in terms of keeping yourself, well, you know, healthy and protected. And uh, I'm not joking about any of these things. And if you say, well, I'm overreacting, fine. I'd rather be I'd rather be in a position overreacting than underreacting. Believe me. Oh, someone asked if they live alone, yeah. or they live like you and I, right? And they don't have the virus or any symptoms. Right. Do they have to sanitize and wash all the oh, time? Oh no! Once, once time? you're in your enclosed space, you're done. You know, once you get your, once you're clean, and you're in your enclosed environment like we are. You know, we have a HEPA filter in here, which may help too. And the main thing is keeping the virus out by practicing sterile technique. Uh, so once we you, don't have to go around all no, day we don't go washing, around washing our hands, our hands all day. Things like that. And, and sterilizing every surface because right. nobody else comes in here except right. us. Right. And, you know, Mary and I are a unit. So if one of us gets sick, uh, the other will be there to help. And uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. We're making... We're making all the effort we can to avoid putting that kind of burden on ourselves and uh, each other. And, all right. Uh, and someone asked if after 14 days, which is almost what we've done since the weekend. Yeah, since the, we went to we went to Santa Rosa for the uh, the uh, intensive weekend and we met with about 80 people down there, and that was before everything got too wild. But we were still very, very careful. And we were on the airplane. We were on the airplane. airplane. But anyway, they asked if after 14 days, um, isolating away from work, schools, et cetera, would it be okay for us to get together with their children and grandchildren as long as we all continue with this plan? Yeah, again, you do not rely upon the diet for your protection. It makes a big difference. And getting off those immune suppressing drugs makes a huge difference. It may be the difference between living or dying, or a runny nose versus uh, bedridden. So these these are very important things. But you want to you want to put your your main effort in isolation. Period. Uh, as far as recommendations, uh, 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 how long you have to be well and isolated to be declare yourself invincible or <laughs> uninfected? Uh, they say 14 days. Again, this is the kind of information that you want to be getting off of your news sources. Mary and I, can I keep up with this? We're not authorities on this. Well, I don't think they really know. Yeah. I mean, they say 14 days, yeah, they, but now, right. now we've, they've already extended. Um, they started, started with school closures here in Oregon for two weeks, and it's already been extended to the end of April. So obviously no one really knows what's really happening, and they're just kind of trying to do the best they can. Again, error on the side. <laughs> error on the side of the most likely positive outcome. And it's up to you what, what kind of risks you want to take. Mary and I have decided we're not going to take any that we can avoid. Uh, not bad spending my time with her and with the books and the television set. And, you know, <laughs> it's not a bad life. It really isn't. Okay, but, well, someone else asked if he wears gloves to pump gas. Uh -huh. Um, what about the touching that you use when you touch your credit card? Okay, well, again, you're wearing your gloves. Your, your credit card is of concern. And you need to take, and, you know, when you touch the pump, you touch your credit card, you need to put your credit card someplace where uh, you're not going to get contamination. Uh, it's just, you know, simple, logical steps. 
Well, you know, we have um, a box of disinfecting wipes in our car. Yeah. So after we use something like that, we wipe it off uh, before we put it away. Right. We also, you know, if I was go if I had a car that used gas, which I don't. <laughs> so, but when I go and charge my car, I will take either gloves or I'll take an alcohol swab or some kind of protection to take the plug-in uh, end of the uh, station, the EV station, and stick it into my car. And I'll do the same thing taking it out. Believe me, I'm not going to touch anything. So uh, I don't know what the last person that was in that charging station, what their problems were. And I can only assume that um, I'm safest, uh, safest uh, protecting myself. It's up to you. Oh, here's someone who asks, I have to go to the office. It's a very quiet, low traffic place. Can you say a little about the best practices in such an environment? Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change, just like I told you, Mary and I are going to go to the grocery store for entertainment as well. We'd like to pay up a few <laughs> things here in probably about seven to 10 days. Uh, yeah, we have, we have enough for we that. Have enough. We have enough for that. We'll probably we'll go, be going stir crazy when we get out of the house. And uh, yeah, I think if you have to go to work, you should uh, <clears throat> decide, um, you know, how uh, socially uncomfortable you want to feel. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. You know, if I saw somebody well-dressed and well-masked and well-gloved, I'd feel a lot better about being around them than somebody who wasn't. But, you know, that's a whole perception that we're going to have to change. You know, I, I was one of those people who used to walk through the airport two or three months ago and see all the people from China and various parts of that part of the world walking through with masks and see that, saying to myself, well, how silly. Why are they doing this? Well, I know why they're doing it now. And we have the uh, N95 masks. Yes. So, <clears throat> would you like me to? Yeah, we have the N95 masks. But we're there work. are different kinds also. This, this one happens to look like this. It says N95 on the front. And um, do you want me to put it on? Sure, why not? All right. You gotta get a face, you gotta get a, uh, around your face well. Uh, so if you were going to work and uh, you sat down and had a discussion with your fellow employees, et cetera, and told them your concerns. You know, it's harder when you have glasses because you have to make sure it fits under the glasses. And you want to make sure it's fit all the way around underneath here. Yeah. Well, I'm sure your friends would feel bad about, uh, worse about you not coming to rest uh, properly and found out you were positive for the virus later on. <laughs> They'd probably yeah. be very upset with you. So, no, yeah. I'd probably take this off. Yeah. I, I would encourage you to set parameters and tell people, look, this is where you're coming from and you're going to be careful. Of course, working uh, in the home, uh, doing computer interactions the way we, we are focusing not only on business, but also on our family interactions. It's not easy. This is not going to be easy. If you expect it will be, then you really need to rethink these. All right. Someone... Someone wants to know, is it risky to buy produce at the grocery store because it's been exposed yeah, to people? Well, again, you know, you, you don't know what the person who stocked the shelves, uh, what their condition was in. But, they, but you never know that. No, you don't. So what I would tell you to do is if you want fresh produce is take it home, put it in the sunshine, uh, uh, thoroughly cook it. You know, you got to cook it to 170 degrees to kill the flu virus. We don't know about the coron uh, coronavirus is yet. 170 degrees Fahrenheit is what kills the virus. Thoroughly cooked through and through. So you can take your spinach and throw it in your beans. Yeah. Though I saw those beans boiling this morning. <laughs> they were 212 degrees. So, you know, that's the way I would handle it. I would assume everything is contaminated. And, uh, you know, deal with it appropriately. When we go grocery shopping, we bring home the bags. Uh, we come into the kitchen. We put things away with our gloves on. And... Uh, you know, hopefully uh, sitting around for four or five days before we eat it is enough. But likewise, we mostly cook food. They're only cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. They want to know about, what about seeing the dentist, eye doctor, or and other caregivers? Uh, anything you can put off to. <clears throat> not just for your sake, but for theirs too. Uh, this is not a time to get have elective things done. And even if you get sick, as I told you in the last lecture, which is on the website, if you get sick, you don't want to be in the medical system. 
unless all your systems are failing and you're ready to go <laughs> for end of care treatment. Yeah, because they're not gonna do anything for you. They really have nothing to offer the hospital. Uh, you're put in a situation where you know, mistakes are made and sick people are all over the place, so don't go. And um, stay home until just there's no other possibility. We've talked about getting extra support in terms of fluids, in terms of uh, oxygen, which may or may not help. Yeah. Certainly, as I've expressed to you in my last lecture, and my family well knows this, is I do not want extraordinary care in my end days, and that includes a ventilator and uh, many other heroic measures. And my family's well aware of that, uh, particularly my son, who's a uh, board certified internist and a professor at OHSU. He's gonna stand outside my room or my be at a bedside and fend those medical people well-intentioned away from me. So up to you folks. I'm not a believer, I'm a doctor. I know what they can and can't do. And when it comes to this virus, they can't prevent it. Maybe some of the social norms that are going into place now are gonna what they say, flatten the curve, but uh, you're at risk. There's no treatment. Uh, you're gonna hear about uh, malaria medications and anti-AIDS medications, drugs. Oh yeah, there's lots of questions here um, about, about um, what medication is. What medication yeah, there's, 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 there's nothing tested and true. And these drugs are very powerful. So I would encourage you not to get involved or not to be expected to be treated. And when you're offered the experimental treatment at the hospital, I would be very, very, very careful. That's something I've been saying for 50 years. You don't want to be part of an experiment. Or I don't, you know, because almost all of them fail. So uh, let somebody else go that route. You know, okay. It's not, not the time to be noble unless you want to be noble. And, and someone asked, um, tests are recommended only for those showing symptoms, but you you can spread the virus even if you don't have Oh, symptoms. sure you can. But, uh, you know, there's limited resources, as we're all aware. Yeah. And there's nothing that the test is going to do for you personally uh, that's going to benefit you. It's not going to lead to better treatments. It's not going to lead to uh, any decision making you make other than you might decide to be more careful about isolating yourself for other people's sake. Well, you should be doing that now anyways. You know, I don't, I don't care whether you're infected or not infected, whether you're sick or not sick. These techniques that Mary and I are sharing with you for yourself and for others are simple forms of protection that cost you nothing. And at no risk, you should be doing them all the time. So. Okay, let's see. And, and I do want to emphasize <laughs> that this training for the COVID-19 is uh, just training for the future. <laughs> uh, believe me, if you're going to be around a long time, you better get used to uh, pandemics and more severe ones. Uh, so now's the time to start learning the things about protecting yourself. And if you haven't not gotten on a good diet, now's the time to do it. As I told you before, people are overweight, have cardiovascular disease, have diabetes. Uh, they have a much higher risk of dying when they get infected. So you want to be as healthy as possible. And that isn't even dealing at the microscopic level of all the the phytochemicals that kill viruses and the integrity of the gut and lung linings and et cetera. You know, you, you're generally unhealthy. And you know, I've been telling you to get rid of your diabetes, which is 100% curable for type 2 diabetes, or get rid of your rheumatoid arthritis or your multiple sclerosis, which can be stopped almost overnight. You know, I ask you, I've been asking you to do this for a long time for your sake. Well, you know, I guess it doesn't hurt that bad. Take shots of insulin, diabetic pills, and uh, medications to suppress your immune system for autoimmune diseases, at least not bad enough for some of you to change. Maybe the potential of dying of a, of a virus that is uh, given free reign as a consequence of uh, your poor health and your medical decisions. They wake you up and decide, hey, this Mary and John McDougal we've been ignoring and <laughs> <laughs> causing, calling over reactors for many years, maybe we have some, pay attention to them. Time, now's the time to get healthy. And we've given you full instruction on how to do that on our website, drmcdougall.com. All free. It's all free. And I didn't bring up any, any uh, of our Dr. McDougall right food cups. Oh, yeah. We have, uh, we have lots we of those. Lots and, of course, of those. Everybody knows what those look you know like. what they look like. You buy them in all the stores. And cereals. Cereals. And they're 40, about 40 different items. They're in 8,000 stores across the country. They're called Dr. McDougall's right foods. And uh, we have... We have a connection with the company. <laughs> we have boxes and boxes of those, and I would encourage you to get similar products uh, for 
quick easy meals. Yeah, let's see. What, uh, are there any other questions that you didn't address? Well, there are going to be more. We're going to, we're going to be uh, doing oh, more discussions. I have a lot. Of, there's a lot of questions about people flying places. Um, and, uh, you know, I, they want to know whether they should, they want to go and see their, their parents. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I can't speak to the risks. I know. Out there. Uh, you, you, you listen to the experts, you listen to the scientists as far as, uh, and you decide what the benefits and risks are to you. But again, you've got a lot of, a lot of ways you can approach these contaminated situations. You can approach it with no defense and uh, just hope for the best, or you can approach it with defense. So, like I told you, 10 days ago, when May and I flew to the weekend down in Santa Rosa from Portland, we had our gloves on. We didn't have our masks on at that time, but we will next time. And we wiped down the seats with alcohol. Nobody else did. Nobody else did, no. I mean, and. Uh, Probably then the uh, the prevalence of the virus in the community was a lot smaller than it is now. And, but it's not going to be that way next week or the week after. So uh, I would uh, I would weigh any traveler, any uh, contact with other individuals very carefully. And uh, and again, if you're going to make contact with people that are really important to you, establish a clean relationship with them, like we will with our grandkids when they need our care. And uh, otherwise, they're not leaving our premises. They're it. That's it. <laughs> Just five. And, Mary and I will be parents again of a five and seven year old. We're going to be okay, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can't have them running them out of the house. Uh, playing with Francis. Someone asked, um, I have a 12 year old grandson. He wants to be out playing with his friends during the time off from school. Yeah. Well, I'd love to know your thoughts about this. I think you're, I think you're, you know, you're running a risk. And, uh, you know, it depends on how much you want to mitigate that risk. You could do something as, uh, as reasonable as having another set of clothes for the child when he goes out or she goes out and have them take off the clothes as soon as they come in the house. And those will be our outside clothes like we do now with our shoes. We have outside shoes, period. We don't wear them in the house. And uh, you may do that. You may have the, the person, this child of yours, so say, look, the, you understand this is a big deal and you want to go out and play with your friends well you come in you take off your clothes and in the bathroom i put freshly washed clothes which have been washed at a temperature of over 170 degrees i hope <laughs> and uh you're going to put them on and that's the way we're going to live in the house and you're going to be clean period and grandma and grandpa just can't take the risk and uh, otherwise you're going to have to combine the child to your home which may not be the best choice but uh you know, we, we plan on having the bike bicycles come over with the kids when they do come over and we'll take them for rides in the park and many, many places. Yeah. But we won't be contacting other people. All right. But when we come home from riding the bicycles down in the park in front of our place, um, we'll wash oh, yeah. up we'll and wash our hands. take off the outside shoes and, right. and all that stuff. So, you know, we'll be... Real careful. Even, even going up, uh, picking up packages, uh, which we do, mail and stuff. You know, I, I wear gloves. So I lay them in the sunshine for a while. And, uh, you know, the, the only 100% protection is to avoid the virus. And, you know, it's kind of like when I was in medical school, one of my classmates uh, asked, how many sperm does it take to get a woman pregnant? <laughs> 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 one! <laughs> And how many coronaviruses does this gatekeeping make you sick? Well, you know, you have to be careful. Um, here, how about um, side effects of um, medication? Um, someone who's taking uh, methotrexate? Well, again, methotrexate, I haven't looked it up. The other drugs that are used for treating these autoimmune diseases besides methotrexate are very immune suppressant. I just can't remember what, what uh, uh, the mechanisms and consequences are of methotrexate, but it'd be easy for me to look up on the internet. So any drug you're on, any blood pressure pill, et cetera, you're on, uh, you should look it up. And, <clears throat> you know, I've been practicing taking care of people with uh, a dietary lifestyle approach for 46 years. 
And uh, I never feel comfortable at the clinic until people are off their medications. It takes me about four days to get them to a minimal amount of medication or off all medications. Then I can sleep well at night because in between that time, I'm dealing with low blood sugar reactions, low blood pressure reactions, et cetera, in the process of getting people off their drugs. But once they're off their medications, I sleep well. <laughs> So uh, I think in most cases, you're better off airing, unless you know the medication is crucial on the side of taking less than more. Yeah, you wanna to talk to your private doctor about that, but uh, uh, yeah, some medications are crucial and uh, you need to take them. I'm not gonna deal with you that, with, deal with you individually on that, that's something between you and your physician. But you ought to be well, well aware of the, of the consequences of these drugs you're on particularly the immunosuppressants. And uh, believe me, most cancer chemotherapy is a fraud in terms of giving you a better life and a longer life. And I've showed you the data on that. You can look at it in the last uh, newsletter and I'll tell you something else. Uh, these treatments for autoimmune diseases that suppress natural killer cells or what we call biologics. Uh, these things are highly toxic. People die from them. They suppress the immune system. That's how they work. Likewise, taking vegetable oils like fish oil, suppress the immune system, that's the way they work. Probably non steroidal inflammatory drugs are toxic too. You know, you just need to stay, give your, give your body its best chance. Feed it good, sun it a little bit, walk it around a little bit, and keep it clean. I mean, these are simple things. And, uh, and uh, if you have any doubt about how serious I, I feel about this, then you're going to listen to me next time. You're going to listen to me next week. <laughs> listen to me in two weeks. Uh, you're going to say, I want to hear more. Uh, All right. There's also some questions about pregnant women. Yeah, well, they should, should they take extra precautions? I don't know how you can be more extra than Mary and I have already taught you. You know, we've taught you total isolation. That's what you ought to be. You know? So you're pregnant, you're sick, you got COPD, you got... You're still staking your uh, natural killer cell suppressant or biologic agents or, you know, your chemotherapy. Well, you know, yeah, you're at higher risk. And yeah, I have gave you some suggestions on that. But your primary issue is you've got to stay away from this, this infectious agent. And again, there'll be new ones out here in the future. So get used to it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. We're in a, we're in a new world. But it's going to be a good world, and it's going to set us up for the changes that need to be made to save what's really important. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you could write to info at drmcdougall.com if you have more questions, and Mary and I will come on well, every once in a while. We'll do this again. Yeah. And we'll share with you in a very friendly manner. Of course, we charge for nothing. You know that. <laughs> we encourage you to share what, our message with other people. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know, we try and be as accurate as we can be and make corrections when necessary. But uh, again, you know, we're pretty much experts on sterile technique. Uh, we're pretty much experts on food. We're pretty much experts on health and how to get well. We're not uh, epidemiologists. We're not virologists. Uh, so don't expect any kind of information from us and certainly don't rely on that information from us because we're getting at the same place you are. You want to be healthy, you want to stand the best chance. And I think our tips are very, very reasonable, very cost free. So, anyway, we wish you the best. Mary and I are going to pack up, go out and get some sun, relax for the day. Uh, we've got, obviously, we showed you what we have for dinner plan tonight. And tomorrow morning it'll be oatmeal. Either Mary will make it or we'll get it from Dr. McDougall's Right Foods. Yeah. Yeah. And life goes on. We're happy. Now, I have to tell you, I'm more optimistic about the future than I've been in a long time. Yes, I am. Uh, but let's continue this conversation as, as the days and weeks go on. Okay. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, again, info at drmcdougall.com. The website is drmcdougall.com. There are no gimmicks. Uh, this is free information for you. That's the way we do business. And uh, keep in touch. We'd like to see you at the 10-day program sometime. Or if we do an uh, online program, we'd like you to participate in that. Uh, we're here to help. You know, whether or not you're on a program or, or not, we're here to do the best, the most we can. Thank you very much. I Thank will uh, look forward to talking to you in the near future. Bye-bye.